lecture, let us discuss about equivalence partitioning, which is the technique of black box testing. This is a software testing technique used to identify test cases by dividing input data into partitions, which are also called as equivalence classes that are expected to exhibit similar behavior. So here, so this can be considered as a systematic technique, which is used to minimize number of test cases while maximizing the test coverage. So main intention is to minimize the test cases and maximize the test coverage. And what we are doing here, input data is divided into multiple classes or partitions. And a test and testing a representative sample. So we'll take a sample from every partition for testing. And that partition is sufficient to uncover most of the errors present in the input data. So the main idea is that if one test case from a partition works correctly, others should work well, right? So that's the reason why we are taking only single partition or single sample for, from a partition. So in that way, we can reduce the number of test cases needed while still ensuring the comprehensive coverage also. Then uh, coming to equivalence class, what is meant by this? So here, equivalence class, they mainly represent set of input conditions that produce the same output behavior from software under test. So equivalence class are nothing but the group of inputs that are treated the same by the system. Here, each class, it can be either valid, that is an acceptable input or invalid, which is nothing but an unacceptable input. So, first one is a valid equivalence class, which are nothing but set of inputs that represent valid or acceptable data for the system. Say, if you take a function which accepts numbers between 1 and 100, so valid classes might include numbers like 10, 50 and 99 because the range is 1 and 100. Say invalid equivalence class. So these are nothing but the inputs that represent invalid or unacceptable data. Right. So here invalid or unacceptable data means say if you take the same function uh, bit, uh, which accepts numbers between 1 and 100, invalid classes are nothing but the numbers which are less than 1 or even non-numeric values. Right. Then boundary equivalence classes, so they always, here the set of inputs uh, lie on the boundaries between valid and invalid data. So valid data is 0 to 100. Invalid data, so the boundary between this valid and invalid data, those inputs come on, comes under this boundary equivalence classes. Coming to the benefits of equivalence partitioning, so here first thing is improved efficiency, Say, uh, it, focusing on re representative cases allows for quicker test execution and easier management of testing efforts. So here we are not uh, executing every uh, every test case, right? So we are taking one sample from a partition to check if that complete partition or if, if the input in that partition is working or not. So in that way, uh, we are executing uh, the test cases fastly or uh, it helps in quicker test case execution as well as easier management of testing efforts. Then error detection. So here uh, you can detect the errors early. So by systematically testing boundary values and categories. So here by doing that potential issues can be identified earlier in the development process. Then the third one is resource optimization. Here, the testers, they can allocate resources more efficiently by focusing on most critical areas of functionality rather than exhaustive testing. Here, you can take few examples. So, if it is an online form of uh, email submission, so what can be the valid and the invalid test cases here, invalid classes here. So, if you take this uh, valid part, correctly formatted emails, so this is the right email format, right? So if this comes under valid one and common domain names. So here the domain which we give here, it should exist. It should not be something like uh, something else. So that for format is also important. And the invalid one. So incorrectly formatted emails. 
So if you write something like this, user at the rate dot com or without at the rate user dot com. So they comes under invalid or incorrectly formatted emails. Then uh, emails with invalid characters. So you can't take uh, an email ID something like this with invalid characters like exclamatory. So that comes under invalid classes. So we have. So these two are most important, valid and equivalent. So you can even concentrate this boundary uh, part in the boundary value analysis. So let us just focus only on these two parts now. Second example here, we can take product return period. So say if the return date is 30 days, then days within the return policy, you can give any value between 1 to 30, it becomes a valid class. Whereas if you give some other value, say days less than 1, if the value is 0, that is an invalid days exceeding the policy. If you give 31 days, that is an invalid one. And if you give non-numeric input, so here the input is numeric one. If you give non-numeric value, say two weeks, that becomes an invalid category. Next third example, hotel booking, check-in date. So valid ones are future dates. So here, uh, if I want to book a hotel, so you need to give any date after today say tomorrow, day after tomorrow, any date after to today. And invalid is nothing but if you give past days, past dates for booking a ticket or for booking a hotel, then that becomes invalid, say yesterday's date. And invalid date format. So here in February, we don't have 31 days. So if you give that, it becomes invalid and non-date value. So you can't give something like this next week, today, like that. So here, this is nothing but yesterday's date. So you need to mention that date format only, but not some non-date value. You can even take subscription plan selection here. So these are the valid plans, right? Basic, standard, and premium. Invalid plans means, so this plan is not at all existing free. If you give that, that is invalid. And if you leave that field empty, empty selection is also invalid so we are not selecting any plan here in this case so that becomes invalid selection again non-empty inputs so you can't give some uh, values here integers like one two so it should be only string okay it should not be a number next example is university codes registration say suppose these are the credits that a student can register so here uh, credit should be between 1 to 18. So in that case, if you take any value between this range, within this range, that becomes a valid one. Say if you take credits exceeding the limits, 19 or 25, which is not existing between 1 to 18. That is an invalid case. If you take credit less than 1, so here value starts from 1. If you take 0 or any negative value, that is invalid, non-numeric values. So here the values are only integers. So you can't give something like this full time or five. So it should be only, it should be taken as five integer value, but not as a string. So that becomes, or that comes under invalid class. These are a few examples for equivalence partitioning.